Okay, I've got another story to tell today, and this one is about my 10th great-grandfather, and he is Captain John Thomas Rolfe. Um, John Thomas Rolfe, again, going back 10 generations. Uh, his story, we're going to begin in the year 1609, when he and a bunch of other folks got on a ship by the name of the Sea Venture that was bound for Virginia. And uh, there were 500 new settlers that got together, and the Sea Venture was carrying 150 passengers on board. Now, they left in May of 1609, and in June of 1609, they ran into a terrible storm. The Sea Venture was separated from the rest of the, the new settlers, and they wound up being shipwrecked on one of the islands just off of Bermuda. And uh, if you go back a number of, uh, I guess a number of months ago now, um, there's another one of our relatives that was actually on that same boat. And uh, we'll dig back through, you'll, you'll find that story as well. So, they, uh, nobody was lost when they were shipwrecked, but for 10 months, they actually worked to gather uh, supplies that they could find on the island and using the salvage parts from the, the old Sea Venture, they actually created two new ships uh, in 10 months' time. One was called the Patience, and one was called the Deliverance. But I should stop right there and tell you that while they were shipwrecked, um, John Rolfe's wife passed away shortly after giving birth to a daughter, and that daughter was named Bermuda. Uh, I think in honor of where, where they uh, had been shipwrecked. And Bermuda passed away as well. So um, John Rolfe buried his wife and his daughter there in, uh, in Bermuda. And the patients and the deliverance set out uh, in June of 1610. And after 10 days of sailing, they reached the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, when John Rolfe got there, he found that there were a lot of problems going on with the, uh, the New World colonies that had been set up in, uh, in Virginia. Um, I found that they, uh, the colonists had tried their hand at a lot of different things to make a go of things and to, be, uh, to, to return some profits on some of their efforts. Uh, they had tried silk making, they had tried glass making, they had tried the lumber business, they had tried raising sassafras, they tried making pitch and tar, uh, soap, ashes, soap ashes, none of this worked. John Rolfe had the idea. He had actually, while he was in uh, the area of Trinidad and Tobago, had picked up some tobacco seeds. And he thought it might be worthwhile to try their hand at growing tobacco in Virginia. And uh, at this time, in experimenting with tobacco, most of the European markets were being controlled by the Spanish. And um, it was said later, the secretary of Virginia colonies, uh, his name was Ralph Hammer, he actually wrote the following um, regarding the tobacco seeds that had been obtained down in the Caribbean. He said, I may not forget the gentleman worthy of such commendations, uh, which first took the pains to make trial thereof. His name, Mr. John Rolfe, Anno Domini, 1612, partly for the love he hath a long time born into it, and partly to raise commodity to the adventures. Um, so he was uh, agreed to make trial of this, uh, this tobacco, uh, and it was said that the new leaf of the Trinidad tobacco plant smoked pleasant, sweet, and strong. And uh, they had a very good crop that first year of uh, 1612 and uh, enjoyed a bunch of it themselves and smoked that up. And the rest was shipped off uh, to England where it was said to compare favorably with the Spanish leaf. Um, so uh, I think we can credit uh, John Rolfe for uh, bringing tobacco to the, uh, the new colonies and Virginia. Uh, that's, that's the way the story is, so can't do anything about the past. Um, now
Now, what I found interesting is uh, uh, just recently, in uh, about 10 years ago, the Jamestown Re Research uh, Group, uh, they sent a bunch of archaeologists uh, to a place called James Fork, where there was a well. And while they were excavating out this well, they found a lot of seeds down at the bottom. And they said they went to an archaeobotanist, archaeobotanist, I think that's a real word, uh, identifying plant remains uh, from archaeological context. And it said among the seeds that were identified were some tobacco seeds, which they believed to be the same strain of tobacco that John Rolfe brought uh, into Virginia from the Caribbean islands. So uh, uh, I think that, that still is a history that uh, is going on. The name of John Rolfe can be found still in, uh, down uh, in the Chesapeake Bay area of Virginia. There's roads named after him. There's schools named after him. So his legacy still lives on in the annals of Virginia history. Uh, I did not take Virginia history in school, so I don't know just how well known he is. But there is one other story uh, dealing with Captain John Thomas Rolfe that you may know. And this, uh, we're going to actually switch gears here. And uh, this deals with uh, the chief of the Powhatan tribe. He had a lovely daughter that was very beloved. And uh, her name, actually, uh, Moataka, I think was the, uh, the name that she was given. Uh, but she also had a nickname, uh, which uh, translated in the Powhatan language is a Playful One. And that name is Pocahontas. And in the year 1613, um, Pocahontas was actually kidnapped by some members of the Jamestown area, down there in the Chesapeake uh, Bay area. And she was kidnapped and uh, brought to Jamestown with the thought that being the, being the chief's daughter, she could be exchanged for some English prisoners as well as some weapons uh, that uh, Powhatan had held. And so the goal was to capture Pocahontas and then make an exchange for some of the British um, uh, prisoners that the Indians were holding. Well, while she was in captivity in Jamestown, it turns out that she converted to Christianity. And she changed her name from Pocahontas to Rebecca. And uh, she came to the attention of John Rolfe. And uh, John Rolfe was a very pious man. Uh, of course, he had... Uh, lost his wife down in Bermuda, and he said he asked, or he, uh, he agonized for many weeks about uh, his wish to marry a heathen. And he was quite concerned about this, so he wrote a very long letter to the governor of the Virginia at the time. His name was Thomas Dale, uh, asking for his thoughts as well as permission from the governor of uh, Virginia to marry Pocahontas. And uh, in his letter, this is what Rolf wrote. He said, it is Pocahontas to whom my hearty and best thoughts are and have long been and have been a long time so entangled and enthralled in so intricate a Libraneth, 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 that I could not unwind myself thereout. Um, so, She's converted now, and in 1614, the wedding took place, and our, my 10th great-grandfather married Pocahontas, and uh, she was known as Rebecca. And this resulted in uh, peace with the Indians for quite a long time, and uh, she was actually uh, helped to develop the, uh, because of this peace, it allowed the colonists to better develop the land, and uh, get more strength from their, their new cash crop of tobacco. And I actually found a artist's rendition of Pocahontas. And if I can get my device to open here, I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm, of course, not having much luck with getting this open. And so I'm just going to have to skip that part because I don't know what's going on. Um, so... Uh, in uh, 1616, Thomas Rolfe then took uh, Rebecca, Pocahontas, uh, and by this time they had a son whose name was Thomas. Thomas was named after Thomas Stoll, uh, Dale, Thomas Dale, who was the governor 
of uh, Virginia. And uh, it was uh, his concurrence that uh, allowed them to get married. I think uh, John was quite pleased with that, so uh, that, that worked out well. Um, they spent many months in England traveling around the highest circles in London society, and while there, Pocahontas died uh, in Gravesend, England, and there's actually a big statue uh, to her uh, now in England, uh, being, the, being the wife of, uh, of John Thomas Rolfe. Um, Rolfe left uh, Thomas there in England in the care of uh, a guardian and returned back to his new adopted home of Virginia. And he became a counselor uh, in the Virginia Senate and the House of Burgesses. Uh, he married again, which uh, is who we actually descended from. And uh, he continued his effort to improve not only quality, but the quantity of Virginia tobacco. And I found some statistics. In 1617, tobacco exports to England uh, came to about 20,000 pounds. Uh, the next year, they doubled that to over 40,000 pounds, and 12 and a half years later, they were uh, exporting uh, a half a million pounds of tobacco uh, to England from the Virginia colonies. So uh, he is considered the first great American enterprise that had now been established, uh, thanks to John Rolfe. Uh, he died sometime uh, in, towards the, in the 1620s. There's some question about how he died. Um, there was a large uh, Indian uprising in the year 1622. Uh, almost a third of the colony was wiped out. Um, there are those who believe, historians believe, that John Rolfe was actually killed in one of those uprisings, but there's been no accurate detailed records on that. So, Anyway, I thought I'd just share that with you, that uh, we can thank the growth of the American tobacco uh, crops in, starting in Virginia to our 10th great-grandfather. And also we have a tie to uh, Pocahontas. So uh, the next time you watch that old Disney movie, remember that there is a, a, a relation. Uh, Thomas, uh, the son of John Rolfe and uh, Pocahontas, uh, did live, uh, was married, and uh, a lot of descendants are alive today, uh, including, I think I read something, that Nancy Reagan is actually a descendant of uh, Thomas uh, Pocahontas' son, John Wolfe's son. So uh, we do have some cousins uh, that are out there uh, tied to us on that. So thanks again for stopping by. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.